Oh. Uh-oh. Okay, I gotta go. What? What's going on? A another baby? No, I just don't want to work with you. Hey there. Welcome to Sports Center with Jan Dan, brought to you by Tim Hortons. It's still a Jay-free zone, and it has been for... Uh, the last four shows as Jay's home with his newborn and for three of the four shows we have had a co-host joining me here so I think it's time to see who the co-host is for this show James Duffy? Well, I can't, you kind of gave it away at the... I know. We, and did a, we were imitating a Jay's uh, his baby announcement. And then you were imitating Jennifer Hedger. I was Jennifer imitating Hedger's Jennifer Hedger. That's all I basically do is imitations, Dan. You're That's like the bring to modern day Rich Little. This is exciting. I have not done a sports Come center. on in. Come on oh, in. Am I too far from yeah. you? How's that, guys? Good. Since... Uh, Maybe 13 years since the NHL lockout well, in 2005. This is your big break. I know. I'm very excited about it. And you were working this game. It was I know. on the I, TSN I, I hosted this game. Or and the I'm Leafs still League. here, Dan. <laughs> Hero. It's a word that's thrown around. Ah, it's the Leafs and Sabres. Thanks for letting me to do this. Uh, Toronto one point up on Buffalo for second in the Atlantic. Jack Eichel, one goal his last 16. Austin Matthews, 13 and 13. No score in the second until this. He's kind of good. Fourth goal in three games since returning from the injury. Toronto 13 and 0 when scoring first this season, so it bodes well. Dying seconds of the period. Mitch Marner, king of the apples, to John Tavares, to Jake Gardner. It's a beauty with 10 seconds left in the period. And Toronto's 14 and 0 when leading out. After two, that bodes well as well, Dan. Third period, Rasmus Ristolainen to Jack Eichel, who took over in the third. Buries the one-timer. His sixth ties it at deuces. Nazem Kadri will not like this highlight. Turns it over at the blue line. Eichel, nice little move on Zaitsev. Second of the period, 3-2 Buffalo. Sabres trying to win their seventh straight at home. And Naz, uh, he knows he done wrong. Less than two minutes later. Morgan Riley's point shot. Oh, this works out well. Off the end boards, right to Marlowe. Ties the game at three. And with that goal, we are headed to overtime. It was awful until this, Dan. 2.7 seconds left. Matthews with the shot, which is just one of the best in the National Hockey League. Leafs win their fifth straight. Buffalo loses their fourth straight. Babcock having some fun with Mark Masters after the game. Orange in that, who's ever on that light? Are you guys like for real here? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I said coming in hot. No wonder they're kicking yeah. the world junior. Man. Nicole, God. Take a month off after that. Matthews becoming just the second player since 96 97 to score 15 goals in his first 14 games. Simon Gagne had 16 the first year coming out of lockout 2005 2006. The Leafs matched the franchise record for fewest games to reach 20 wins set way back in 1934, 1935. They're back in action Thursday against the Red Wings. Might be Nylander Thursday, okay. if not Saturday for Nylander. Do you want me to stop? Yeah, you don't have to read every note on the board. Hmm. Carey Price, this was supposed to be his bounce back year. After a concussion sideline, the Habs tender for part of last year, Price was back, re-energized, and we've seen flashes of brilliance from Price this year. But the stats tell a different story. Price ranked all the way down in the 30s in goals against average and save percentage. It was a all-Canadian battle. Sends in Canadians. Max Domi and Jonathan Durant won two in scoring on the Habs. Domi 27 points, Durant 22. Let's see how the two did against Ottawa. Domi picks up his 17th assist of the season. Durant makes a nice move for his 10th of the year. one nothing Habs. Carey Price. Not good at home. He's posted a better record. Goals against average and save percentage on the road this year. Five to play in the first. Is that Chris Cuthbert on the call? Uh, Price has won just one of his last six starts. Final minute of the friend. Colin White on the doorstep. Price is there. 
Heads up play to clear the rebound. He made 10 stops in the frame. one nothing Habiton after one. Second period off the draw. Dylan DeMello. Fires. Emma moves! That is not Chris Cuthbert on the call, is it? Well, there's two different calls for this game. Oh. And we do uh, regionals for Ottawa and for Montreal. Follow along with our regional broadcast, please. <laughs> so there's Cuthbert on that call. They're not doing it at the same time, Dan. They're on different in different regions. It's <laughs> true. Leading the rush. Drops for Domi. I work in the building and I'm confused. <laughs> second of the game. That's just the second two-goal game of the season. Montreal takes a 3-1 lead. Domi and Drouin both with three points. Montreal wins. Price 28 stops, ninth one of the season. Dan Jets Isles, I thought I'd do a tribute to Jay by using some of his patented catchphrases in these highlights. There's Connor Hellebuck struggling a little bit of late, scoreless in the second. Hal Clutterbuck left alone in the slot, but Hellebuck with the save, Dan, that's using your face. Oh, he didn't use his face. Oh. Under a minute later to Jordan Everly, robbed by Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky's not in this game. Stopped all 20 shots he faced through two. Thomas Grice, Canadian, pitching a shutout as well. No, he's not Canadian. To Kyle Connor, wide open net, but he hits Grice in the, in the head. That's there, there. That's there you go. Your now say it. Head. Oh, 18 saves through two periods. A scoreless heading into the third. Winnipeg unbeaten when tied through two. Anders Lee, exotic journey from Milan to Minsk. No, that's the, Ricard break, Raquel. That's Ricard Raquel. Breaks the deadlock, collecting the Johnny Boychuk rebound. 1-0 Islanders just over two minutes later. Jets respond on the power play. Jacob Truba, Canadian. Oh, man. <laughs> he beats Grace. Truba filling in on the man advantage as Josh Morrissey sits with a lower body injury. We weren't done. I just had a baby. I just made that up as Jay's, Jay's new catchphrase. Jets 3-1 uh, is the final. They're fourth straight. Flames to Jackets. Free game. Johnny Goudreau. He's started by the Jackets cannon. Check your... Check your underpants, first period. Johnny Hockey takes the drop pass from Sean Monaghan. Top corner. Goudreau's 11th of the season, 1-0. Flames. David Rick a lot of season high four goals in his last start. Giving up two in the first. Cam Atkinson beats him, extends his point streak to 11 games. 3-1 Columbus after one. Big save Dave on the bench to start the second. He allowed three goals on 14 shots. Mike Smith replaces him. Less than a minute into the frame. Atkinson, first shot that Smith sees. It's in. Hat trick in this one. A seed of some sort just came out of my teeth. I don't remember eating anything that had seeds in it. Less than a minute later, he has Lindholm in the slot. His 13th of the year, Flames cut the lead to one. Have you cleaned your teeth in the last three days? I floss them before every show. <laughs> Calgary, another man advantage. Matthew Kachuk jams in the rebound. His 13th of the season ties it at four. Kachuk, we're still in the second. Between the legs to Noah Hannafin in front. We love you, Miss Hannafin. His third of the year, great feed by Kachuk. Flames with four and unanswered. They're up 5-4. The puck gets by Zach Wierenski. We draw partial break. Stop. TJ Brody. Rebound. Calgary scores five goals in a period for actually the fourth time this season. The rest of the NHL has three. Third period. Flames power play. Monaghan. Second of the game. Finished with four points. Goudreau cuts to the slot. Yeah, there are a lot of goals in this game. Goes five hole for his second of the night. Also had four points. The two teams combined for 15 goals. The most scored in the NHL this season. Flames went at 9-6. Oh, let's hear from Torts. I have never been in a game like this. I've coached a lot of games, never in a game like this. 11 scoring chances, nine goals. And, I mean, and let's face it, their goaltender wasn't that good either early on. And um, it's just one of those games. Canucks at home to the Wild. Josh Lebo making his Vancouver debut after being acquired from Toronto on Monday. Getting a shot on the Canucks' top line. Early in the first. Lebo scores on his very first shot as a Canuck. A day after being acquired. Vancouver's recent pickup op pick opens the scoring for his new team. Second period. Vancouver's fourth line controlling play in Minnesota's zone. Tyler Mott uh, scores. Mott's club auto. Canucks have lost 11 of their last 12. But they have the lead. Minnesota kicking off a road trip. 
The fire alarm at their hotel went off at 2 a.m. the night before the game. Uh, Bruce Boudreau was not impressed, saying, I wasn't going to walk down 15 flights of stairs. I didn't smell any smoke. <laughs> I said, I'm chancing it. He's the best. That extra rest seemed to come in handy. Mini with a five on three. Ryan Suter, one timer, is tipped by Jason Zucker. Ties it at two. The Wild on the same power play. Zucker scores and puts it bar down. That's a website that our company created. And I'm hoping to see the residuals very soon. Makes a lot of money, Dan. Bad news for the Canucks. Greg Pattern hits Jake Vertanen from behind into the boards. Vertanen stayed down for a few minutes, went to the room. Pattern only got two minute minor for boarding. They're in the third. Sidney Crosby and Nathan McKinnon have a lot in common with Jay and Dan. Both relentlessly push Tim Horton's products on the Canadian public. Both are good friends on camera and in their commercials or shows, but relentless rivals trying to one-up each other off the air. Like last week, Crosby gets a natural hat-trick against the Avs. McKinnon gets four points. Here, Jay has a baby. Dan is now expecting twins with two separate women. <laughs> There's Sid. He's the captain. He's number 87. There's Nate, his buddy from Cole Harbor, right there. Actually, we're not going to see Nate, but you know these guys. I, I sold them in the intro. They didn't do a heck of a lot. Malkin knocks in the loose puck. Penn score three in the first. Nine different players collect points. None from Sid. League's best power play with a chance in the second. But the Pens have killed 19 straight. Tyson Berry puts an end to that one off the post and in. Abs would score three unanswered to tie it. It was a terrific game, but again, there wasn't much Nate or Sid. McKinnon pointless, throws down Patrick Hornquist. Abs break in, lose the puck. Hornquist at the end of his shift, gassed, doesn't matter, breakaway. Stopped by Semyon Varlamov. I guess it did matter, Dan. But his luck would change in the third. Chris Letang puts one on net. Hornquist, this is just the beginning. Pittsburgh back in front, not long after. More from Hornquist. Beats Varlamov with a knuckle puck, back-to-back -back goals, giving them a 5-3 lead, and I think you know what's coming. Three goals in 167 seconds, and it was hat night, so everybody got free hats, and then they threw their free hats on the ice, and they didn't have hats anymore. Still the Cup. Over a century after winning the Stanley Cup, Seattle becomes the NHL's 32nd team. Find out what's next for the Emerald City and how this will impact the rest of the NHL. Next. So here's where we walk over to the well, other side. Don't run the clock yet, because I want you guys to do this. Nope. I want to break the, a record. Do you have a record? I don't know. And be all time. 2.5. 2.51 seconds. And I think they're a little slow on the uh, the stopping of the clock, but yeah, that is easily a new world record. Way to go. That was awesome. So you're the fourth anchor to fill in right. for Jay on this show. Uh, my last two co-hosts, Lindsay Hamilton and Tessa Bonom, they I'd never worked with them before, uh, but we've worked together. Right, we uh, did. Like I might have done my final sports center with you. And we also did one of our first shows together back in 2003. Time for a Sports Center update with Dan O'Toole, the giant headed Dan O'Toole. I don't mean that literally, just in the sense of your jumbotron yeah. appearance. Just because you're a small man, James. <laughs> James? Dan O'Toole yeah. may get booed after that comment off hey. the top. That is your last appearance in the jumbo screen. Thanks. From now buddy. on, you'll be in the small little plasmas, Dan O'Toole. All right, thanks very much, Dan. Did you like my, uh, my mock turtlenecks? That was my Ooh. look for the early years on the uh, NHL on TSN. I wore mocks every Who night. Who was making our clothes? John Deere? <laughs> I know. They were just gigantic. <laughs> I have so many, I mean, I have so many <laughs> embarrassing suits from back then that are 19 sizes. Was that when you big. had puppets on the show? That was worth, yeah, it would have been. Puppets were 2003. You puppets and uh, comedians and bands and Dan. <laughs> that was your early days, too. You had the curly, you had a lot of like jerry curl I going on not, in there in the lot. Not a sniff of gray hair. No, no you're still lucky. You're still a handsome man. On Tuesday, Dan, uh, the NHL Board of Governors voted unanimously to expand the league and welcome the city of Seattle as home to the 32nd franchise. Play beginning October of 2021.
So the Board of Governors approved a realignment plan. Arizona not happy. No, I, they, they wanted to stay, uh, though they weren't loud enough in their complaints. But I don't think the travel's that much worse. In fact, it might be better because they're not making the trips to Calgary, Edmonton all the time. So be quiet. Suck it up. You're Arizona. And here's what I was thinking, because you saw Jerry Bruckheimer. He did Pirates of the Caribbean, Armageddon. All Armageddon. That. So what are the pregame introductions going to be like in Seattle? Well, we, we thought the same in Vegas. They were nuts. They were very Vegasy. so they're going to be explosions. And Ben Affleck will be there. At every game. Blowing up meteors. That was in, probably the audience hasn't seen Armageddon, the kids, have they? No, that's... Ben Affleck and Bruce gotta, Willis. We, we got to... Back in early October, during our mailbag segment, a viewer asked us our thoughts on a possible nickname for the team. Uh, Jay came up with the Seattle Slough. That's a puddle of water and the name of the 1977 Triple Crown winner. Who are you were a big fan of? My favorite horse. I, I made a scrapbook. I was 11 years old, and I, I made a scrapbook about a horse, Dan. <laughs> I chose to go Seattle's grunge theme, came up with the Seattle Sound Gardens. Right. Um, What's I, yours? Yeah, I was only asked tonight, Dan. I didn't have a lot of time to think about it, but I went with the Seattle Sleepless, and the logo would be Hot Meg Ryan. Like prime time Meg Ryan from Sleepless in Seattle, and what's the other one? The other thing when Harry met Sally. That but one. that's not a Bruckheimer film, so I don't think he'd allow No, when Harry met Sally was a Bruckheimer <laughs> film. It's one of his least known. It was one of his understated films. Uh, to get more on the historic announcement, we need you to run back to the TSN Hockey oh, Studios. Because uh, James has to host Insider Trading. Divided edition of Insider Trading. Uh, Bob McKenzie alongside in studio. Some feared uh, Insider Trading would be cancelled after Nylander signed. No, we still have plenty more. Great work, James. Whew. Well done. That was... And you have to Television. run across a parking lot. I saw, I'm like Tom Cruise on this show. <laughs> you are. Tom Cruise runs in every movie. They should do a montage. Did Bruckheimer do any Tom Cruise? Yeah, he did all of them. When we come back, who needs a quiz when we have the Jannies? It's my first Jannies. Mm -hmm. uh, basketball, if you're doubting my NBA credibility, I once hosted a show called NBA in the Paint, Dan, where I also wore mock turtlenecks for some unknown reason. First quarter, uh, Dennis Smith Jr. This is Trailblazers in the Mavs, by the way. A uh, nice little move between the legs, gets the layup to fall. Plus the harm. Dallas 8 and 2 in their last 10. Second quarter, Smith Jr. with a slick feed. DeAndre Jordan. Oh, does what DeAndre Jordan does. Mavs up 15 at the half. Third quarter, more from Smith Jr. Steal. And in transition, another stuff. 12 points, 9 assists. We go to the fourth. Look at Doncic. Steps back and it places the lotion in the basket. That was a Silence of the Lambs reference, Dan. I'm trying to do a lot of dated reference tonight. Finish with 21 points, 9 boards. Mavs win 111-102 for final. I apologize. I was talking to producer Tim during that, uh, that highlight pack, so I did not hear a second of it. It was amazing. I'll watch it on the loop. Do I do this? No, these are the Jannies, so okay. these are the best and the worst, like, right. like that. Great save by Connor Hellebuck. This is Janny 2. Do I, do I number them? Do I say Janny number 2, Dan? No. Austin Matthews picks the puck out of the air. It was how fast he did it. The hand-eye, and then it's, it's in the net. In a fraction of a second, he also gets the OT winner, 15 goals in 14 games. Jimmy Howard trying to play the puck around the boards. Hits a skate and goes right to Matthew Joseph. Mm -hmm. You know what they did with the seats in uh, Detroit? What, Dan? They cover them now so you can't see the empty seats. They cover them with black. Well, but I hear people are there, but everybody's out drinking in the hallway. That's Flames and Blue Jackets. Oh, Kachuk with the nice tweener pass. Shot block stays with it. Great pass by Kachuk. Who doesn't like a little hallway drinking? Nice move. Goudreau right, so scores. Question. Calgary's eight of nine goals in this game. Yeah, that was just that was just a nutty game back and forth. I was disappointed with Torch, so I thought he would go a little bit more goofy. 
The Bruins Panthers, Mike Matheson picks the puck up behind his own net, starts up the right wing, and just goes by one guy after another, and then shoots from the circle. Panthers beat the Bruins 5-0, just like that. Matthew Joseph again takes the pass near the blue line, off his skate, catches it, and then pokes it by Jimmy Howard. That was a nice goal. Last one, Dan. Final seconds of the UNC Asheville and Auburn. Auburn up huge. Auburn's Miles Parker doesn't care. Going up for the big time dunk, though, does not happen. Defender draws the charge, and there you go. We called and that. You know one. why they're called the Jannies? Because it's a combination of Jay and I's name, so it kind of works with you and I too. Right, James. I've never been called Jay though. I Jamie. No, but the start little. of your name is Jay. The Jammies, James, and yeah, Jammies. Sure. 76ers guard Markel Fultz has been diagnosed with a nerve disorder, according to ESPN. The disorder affects nerves between the neck and shoulder, resulting in abnormal function, functional movement and range of motion. Fultz is expected to miss three to six weeks to undergo. That's right. When I first saw this, it sounds a lot worse than I know. three to six would Hearing make you Nerve believe. damage and all that in three to six weeks is, that's not so bad at all. Yeah. Uh, the CFL's most outstanding player in Grey Cup MVP, Bo Levi Mitchell, going to work out for the Minnesota Vikings on Wednesday. That's according to CFL insider David Sanchez. Mitchell, a two-time Grey Cup champ, is a pending free agent. He's made it clear he'd like to give the NFL a shot. You know this guy. You talk mm -hmm. to him in the lead-up to the Grey Cup, after the Grey Cup. I don't pretend to know his decision. We can ask the insiders, Farhan and Dave, that. But I think he'll give it a shot because he's got that right mix of confidence and, and cockiness. And there's a lot of crappy quarterbacks yeah. in the NFL. So he just has to find the right team where he has a legit... He wants to be a legitimate shot to be the backup. He just so he's not go down there. for a starter role? No, uh, that's not, not right away. Yeah. But he doesn't want to just be a practice squad guy who gets a paycheck. He wants to be a legit backup, and I think he has a shot at that. Has he been talking to Dave Dickinson about this? Well, that's the thing. If you ask Dave Dickinson, who went down for a couple of years and made a little money but was mostly practice squad, and, and he kind of regrets it, he told me at Grey Cup. He feels like he wasted two years of his prime. So, I mean, he might have told Bo those stories, but... Dave would probably also admit Bo's got maybe a little bit more of an NFL arm, although Dave Dickinson was a great quarterback. So I think he gives it a shot, and more power to him. Yep. Uh, Ohio State head coach Urban Meyer, he's retiring following the Rose Bowl. Meyer's coached the Buckeyes for the past seven seasons, winning one national title. Offensive coordinator Ryan Day will take over as head coach. Uh, Mikey DiPietro, did you see my little bit? I mean, it sounds like I'm bragging about the interview, but only because... Uh, yeah, because he was showing he the was reminders really on his phone. He's so cool. He's got all sorts of really neat stuff on his mask, although it was a Windsor mask, and he's, we're about to tell you he got traded to Ottawa. He reminds himself that he was the last cut from Team Canada last year for the World Juniors. Have a reminder almost every day all summer. But he's a lock this year. He's a lock. He'll probably be the starter, but either the starter or the backup. Anyway, traded from the Windsor Spitfires to the Ottawa 67s. This is a huge deal in junior hockey in Canada. The 67s have been on an incredible roll. Look like they're set for a long Memorial Cup run. With, I've done a lot of junior hockey player interviews over the year, Dan. Yeah. They're not great a lot of the time, and that kid was, was, was fantastic. So easy to root for. Um, off the top of the show, you tried to emulate Jennifer Hedger's entrance into the show. Right. I, I was mimicking. We've now got a side by side. Let's see. Well, how she close was the got. first replacement. She was, and she, I thought she was fantastic. She was so amazing. You always try to emulate the best. So I, I went frame by frame. Oh, I was a little early. I think the cockiness. <laughs> she didn't swing the uh, the yeah. arms as much. I looked, I was doing a little too much Zoolander. <laughs> That's pretty good though. Which I get. I used to get Ben Stiller a lot. I can still see that. Yeah. But. Uh, she was fantastic. Oh, you know, Lindsay, I felt almost sheepish coming here because you, how do you follow Jennifer and Lindsay and Tessa back to back to back? And we aren't revealing it. Wait till the final two hosts are revealed for the rest of the week. You guys did a, a poll with your social media. You're active on the social media and you asked people who'd like to host and you had me and, and London from The Littlest Hobo, a, a German shepherd who's been dead for probably 30 years now. And the German shepherd won the dead German Shepherd <laughs> won by a landslide over, over me. Can I say? Still to come. Speaking of dogs, hey, segue. After this hey, dog saved the goal segue. in the soccer game in Argentina, we're counting down the top 10 Argentinian dogs or something <laughs> like that.
Jay and Dan podcast this week. Uh, we have a special guest co-host, Tessa Bonham, joins us, and she talks about cleaning her carpets and the disgusting carpet juice that came out. It's thanks to Coors Light. Listen to it right after you listen to the Rubber Boots podcast. <laughs> it's the worst play of the day. We're in Miami. Uh, that's Winslow with the corner three. Uh, not only does he miss, he tries to show boat. He tries to do the Steph Curry. It's never a good idea when you turn around and you don't know when it's going in, unless it's Steph Curry, because he always makes it. That's the worst, as the kids like to say that. It's never good to turn around if you don't know it's going in. Highlight of the night, Leafs and Sabres and Austin Matthews. Look at that. Really. So he said he was at the end of his shift, right? and he just shot it. Well, he had to shoot. There was 2.7 seconds left dead yeah, but, in the game. Uh, you know what I mean. No, I know. It was a great performance. Okay, you, you blew it. Uh, we point out our errors, and okay. you have the list. Uh, Dan blew it. He spat out a seed during the Flames pack, and he didn't eat anything with seeds today. <laughs> uh, he said Jonathan Huberto has had a multi-point game in five straight games. That's really bad. He gave our deco operator, Sonia, a hard time on the stopwatch for me. He read the script for the Jannies when it was supposed to be the drive through script. And I tried to imitate Jay's catchphrase as, uh, that's using your face. It was a... Uh, it was a blocker save. Uh, Bobrovsky, uh, it was Hellebuck. Uh, I said Canadian uh, Thomas Grice is German. Uh, exotic journey from Milan to Minsk. Uh, I said that for Anders Lee. Apparently, Jay uses that for Ricard Raquel. I also said Jacob Truba was Canadian. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you did you great. You're welcome me. back anytime. And uh, farewell and good luck to Roger Ashby of Toronto's Chum 104.5. 50 years on the air, retiring Wednesday with his final broadcast. I also celebrated 50 years on the air tonight. Just because you're a small man, James. Right. <laughs>